Hello third grade families. Uh, I've done a series of videos in the past for other grades that I've taught for math just to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page and giving you guys a frame of reference for when I send home assignments. Uh, I want to continue doing that as we enter this third grade year. So consider this the first posting of what's going on in math for the first portion of third grade. I uh, hope everybody can hear me well. I'll get started. Uh, if you're better with me, I'm trying to use the iPad here, so everything may not come out beautifully, but as long as we can get a common understanding out of it, that's what we're going for. Uh, let's see. Let's start out uh, just with some quick terminology. The first thing I want to discuss with you guys is the usage of the word digit. Now, a digit is any symbol, and in math, it's just going to be a number. So, zero, one, two, three, four, and all the way to nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's what I'm referring to when I say the term digit. Now, the reason digit is going to come uh, into importance here is we've got to clarify between digit and what we call place value columns. Place value columns for third grade, it's a little difficult because they're coming out of second, uh, prior knowledge isn't too strong, but we're going to try to make this as uh, easy of a transition as we can. So, let's begin. Uh, when we're doing place value, we read from right to left. So as you can see, I'm drawing my lines from right to left. And I'm going to stop with six of them, okay? Alright, so our first line is our basic ones column. Okay, if everyone can see that. Our next one is going to be our tens. And next we're going to have our hundreds. Okay, now notice after the third column, there's a comma. There's always going to be a comma after three columns. The fourth column is going to be one thousands. I'll put TH here as an abbreviation. The next column, the fifth column, is going to be ten thousands. And the final column is going to be 100,000. Uh, let's see if I can find a highlighter here. Uh, I don't have time to do it. But notice the pattern goes every three. There's a one, and there's a 10, and there's a 100. It's just your first three are always going to be 1, 10, 100. Then 1, 10, 100 will repeat, except the next three are going to be in thousands. Okay, so for instance on homework I may ask them what place value column the number's in. Uh, so if I write the following number 217 and I say what place value column is the one in, they're going to need to tell me the tens place. Now, going off that, uh, let me clear everything off here just to make more room. Uh, I'm also going to be asking them for values. So let me put my place value columns back up here. There's three place value columns, and then a comma, and then three more. Okay, let's start simple. Uh, if you'll bear with me. Okay, let's use the number 419. Now, previously I've asked them, what's the name of the place value column? But right now I'm going to change my terminology, and I'm going to use the word value. By value, I'm asking, what is the digit worth? So let's look at the one. What I tell them to do is bring down their number and then any digit to the side, they have their ones column, put the zero in there. So that one is not worth one, it's worth ten. Now we could do that uh, just the same for the four. Uh, let's switch it up, a different color. We could bring down our 4. Oh, I forgot to change the size. Bring down the 4, and we change all the columns to 0. So notice I've changed my 10's column to a 0 as well as my 1's. So the value of that 4, it's worth 400. I also always try to explain to the kids that, uh, let me draw 110, just I'll leave 110 up here for example. I also try to explain to them that 
you can never have a digit bigger than 9. You can have a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or a 9 in any column, but you're never going to see something uh, like this. You can only have one digit in the place value column. So what we would do here, so I hit the right tool, we would scoot the 1 over and put it in the tens column. So now we have 10. Okay? You're never going to see two digits in one place value column. Anytime it gets to zero, we need to move over to our next one. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you for watching this. It's going to be a minute. I just want to try to make this easy on everybody. Okay, another thing I'd like to touch on really quick is uh, some terminology. Uh, let's use the number 314. Okay, now that we've got that up there, this number is, uh, we would say this number is written in standard form. Standard form. Okay, now keep in mind, once again, that standard. We're going to change something here. I'm going to show you another form. This one's going to be called expanded. Now, uh, expanded does what it sounds like. It makes the number bigger. It spreads it out. So here's how I tell my guys to get their expanded form number. We start in our biggest place value column, and in 314, it's going to be the hundreds. So I tell them to bring down their three and fill in the tens and ones with a zero. The next thing I'd like for them to do is bring down their tens column, which is a one, fill in the columns with a zero. And lastly, I would like for them to bring down their ones column, which is a 4. So as you can see now, 300 plus 10 is 310, plus the additional four ones gives us 314, which is their number up here. Okay, and there's one last form. This one's going to take just a little time. I'll try to go through this as quickly as I can. Uh, this last one is going to be called written. Okay, so let's take the number 221, put a hyphen here so we can make sure there's a difference for 221. Written form, I mean, it's, it's literally what you're saying. We're going to write this number. So I'm going to write 200. Twenty-one. Okay, 221, all I do is write the number. This would be in standard form. Expand it is when you break all the numbers down. And then lastly, this is written form. Uh, this year, like I said, we're going to be going up all the way to 100,000. Uh, briefly, I want to show you how we're going to be doing comparing, greater than, less than, equal to, and uh, rounding and estimating. Okay, so first off, I want to start off on comparing. Uh, oftentimes, I'll have a student that might uh, just be a little confused and just take a little extra time to work out. Let's say we're comparing the number 199, and I want to compare that to 211. Well, oftentimes, what the student immediately is going to look at is they're going to see there are two nines here. Well, they know those nines are big numbers, so of course, that's got more nines, so it's got to be bigger than 211, which we know is not the case. The way I teach my students to find 199, 211, the difference, which one is greater, I encourage them to line them up. I tell them to stack their numbers. In math, it's all about the neatness. So you can see I try to keep my columns. Okay, the next thing I'm going to have them do is they need to start in their biggest column, which in this case is the hundreds. What's the larger digit? Of course, the 2 is going to be greater, so that means 211 is going to be greater than 199. Let me uh, do one, one, one uh, more of those for you, please. Let's say... 
Okay, so oftentimes they'll have trouble on something like this too. Let's do 734, 731. Now, obviously 734 is going to be greater, but I want to show you uh, what I encounter quite a bit. Use this color. Okay, so after we've stacked their numbers, 734, and I put it over 731. Okay, what the kids are going to run into is they're going to see when they go to their biggest place value column, it's not going to give them any answer because the digits are identical. So they need to move to the next greatest, which is actually the tens. When they look at the tens, they're going to be identical as well. Those digits are going to be the same. So they've got to come all the way to their ones column before they notice the difference that four is greater than one, which tells them that 734 is greater than 731. Uh, just a brief point of estimation. Uh, let's use the math problem 21. Now remember I'm estimating here. Plus 15. 5 plus 1 being 6. 2 plus 1 being 3. Now estimating, the key word we use with estimation is about. 36 is about what? Now since their greatest place value column is their tens, I'm going to encourage them to tell me 36 is about 30 or 40. Well in this case, because the 6 is larger than uh, the 5, which is where any time 5 or above we round up, I'm going to encourage them to say that 36 rounds off to 40. Okay, uh, so we've covered place value columns, we've covered names, we've covered values, we've covered uh, estimating, uh, I believe we need to cover rounding. I may save that for a later video since this one is getting kind of lengthy. I appreciate you tuning in and thank you much.